Hi, Kelvin family. In our learning module today, we're going to show you the bank of preloaded questions, how to create your first pulse, how to preview a pulse you've created, and how to opt out students that should not participate. Your Kelvin CSM has likely already shared a document with Kelvin's bank of questions that are preloaded. If you haven't received that, you can also find the link to this document in the description box below. Kelvin has hundreds of questions that are already pre-populated in our question bank when you create your student, staff, or family pulses. Sometimes it's nice to get an idea of what's in our question bank before you go in and build your pulse. So we encourage you to review this document that we've shared uh, to take a look at the questions available to you. We're drawing from pre-validated surveys from core districts, New Schools Venture Fund, and the U.S. Department of Education. And as you can see on this page, you'll find dimensions that are being pulled from those surveys. If you look below, you'll notice we have student questions, staff questions, and family questions on the different tabs. So feel free to take a look and think about the questions that are of interest to you. We're going to pause here to give you a moment to review the document of Kelvin's Bank of Questions. I encourage you to identify three to five questions of interest from the Students tab and save those questions for the next knowledge check. Once I log into the system, you'll notice I'm on the launch pad, which is your landing page. And from here, the Create a Pulse card, it actually defaults to a student pulse, but I can create surveys or pulses for three different types of groups. I can create them for students, for staff, and if your organization has upgraded, for families. And we pull all of that information out of your SIS so you don't have to add those participants manually. So if I go to this Pulses tab at the top, You'll see now a list of all the surveys that I have visibility of, um, and I have quite a lot here, but we're going to click this plus new pulse at the top left side of the page, the green button. You'll notice now I have the student, family, or staff option, and keep in mind that the steps are exactly the same uh, regardless of which type of pulse that you want to set up. So I'm gonna select students, and you'll notice this purple tab at the top tells me that there are three steps and those uh, three steps correspond with these tabs here. So the first step is basic information. The second step will be adding my questions and the final step is to create your schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out this information um, and I think I'm going to give this this post title student sense of belonging. And I am then going to select who I want to ask by clicking the Select Students button. Now, you can do any kind of combination, uh, especially from system admin or district level. You might have multiple schools to choose from. So if I wanted to just do uh, sixth grade at Boogie Middle School, I can select those. But for this example, I want to do every student across all of the schools. So I'm going to remove those and click Save with nothing selected. And then you'll notice over here it's, it's uh, populated all students. I could also delete that if I made a mistake, or if I didn't mean to delete that group, I could come back and click this refresh. So this next step, who do you want to share results with, is really important because um, it's who should have access to those results as well as be able to monitor participation while a pulse or a survey is live. And we pre-populate a few different groups for you, but you can control that as well. So if you wanted to add in special groups like the request responders, I can go ahead and add them here. Um, you'll notice for district admins, I have seven in this group, which means there are seven district administrators that will receive the results. But if I had a big group of school admins, say principals, um, school principals, let's say that I had 50, then those school admins will only have visibility based on the sites they're affiliated to, not to the entire district. So if I'm the principal at Boogie Middle School, when I log in, I'm only going to see results that pertain to Boogie Middle. 
And then below in the advanced settings, you can either um, turn off or on comments. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect. And then this, this allows students to request to speak to an adult is a special prompt that students will see if you have that selected. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna click next, which will let me go and add my questions. So you can either add a custom question or you can pull questions from the bank. Now I reviewed some of the bank questions earlier and I already have some in mind that I wanna do. So I'm gonna start there and I can either search by a, a keyword or I can select from the dropdown of different dimensions that are already pre-populated. And I wanted to look at sense of belonging. So I go ahead and search that and now you'll see a list of questions that have, are related to sense of belonging. And I'm gonna go ahead and add, are you happy to be at the school? You'll notice it's a Likert type question and comes from the core. And I also wanna add, do you feel close to people at school? Now, once I'm ready to go edit those questions or look at them further, I can click this X. And you'll notice if I click on a question here, I can then make edits to it. So I like the I like this question, but I want to be more specific and say, do you feel close to other students at school? And then you'll notice the star indicates the favorable responses. So these are still applicable to uh, the question, even though I changed some of the wording. I can duplicate this as well and maybe ask a question if they feel close to teachers at their school and I will fix that spelling. All right, I also wanna add in a, a custom question. Uh, but one other thing I wanna point out before I add my custom question is once I've gone in and changed the stem of a question, you'll notice it changes, changes it to a custom question here in the description rather than showing a bank question. And this first question, are you happy to be at the school, has a translation in Spanish available. So if I make any edits to this question and turn it to a custom question, I then lose that original translation that was attached with because it no longer makes sense. Um, it's taken away the original wording. So after this, I'll click the plus, add a custom question. And I want to add, what is one thing just paste it in here. What is one thing you can do to make your school a better place? And I want this to be an open-ended question. So from clicking on that Likert, I now have the option to change the question type. And you'll notice those Likert responses are now removed. This excl exclamation point tells me I'm missing a dimension. So if I click on select dimension, I can add that. And I'm gonna create a new dimension called uh, personal responsibility. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my um, definition for that. Just paste that in here. So the description is what students are doing to take personal responsibility for the culture of their school. And the reason I add this dimension is that it then rolls up my questions to allow me to do reporting at a, a question group level. So now I have my four questions that I want to ask. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And now that I've added that basic info, added my questions, this last final step is to create my schedule. And I wanted to start at the beginning of the next school year. So I'm gonna click into my calendar and begin at the end of August. You'll notice the default is set for seven days. And we, we typically recommend a week to leave it open so that students have opportunities to respond if they're absent one day or don't have time on a day that they're logged in on Chrome. And then you can also uh, set it to repeat automatically without any additional intervention. So go ahead and click custom. And I want this to repeat every six weeks until the end of the school year in June. So I'm gonna go ahead and click ahead to June and select my end date. And then I can just go ahead and create that schedule. And as a system administrator, I'll receive an email reminder telling me that the pulse is going to come out. So you'll see this created what looks almost like calendar invite shows me that I have eight pulses set up. I can come here and change dates if I need to. I can click that edit and change that window. Let's just say that in November, this falls on Thanksgiving week. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that window for November. 
and now you'll see it's updated to seven course administrations. I can add another window, add some dates down here, but I'm happy. I'm going to click finish setup and then you'll notice everything is ready to go. So it's telling me we're going to ask students four questions from August 28th to September 3rd. Um, and I could go back to the settings and change a couple of things. So if I click here and edit settings, I can go back to that. And one of the things I want to check is that I've have the correct participants selected. So I have students select, all students selected here, but I could come back and change that. Uh, you wanna make sure that results are being shared to the appropriate people, not too many and not too few. And of course you wanna make sure that you have questions. You may wanna proofread those. And then you wanna make sure that you have a schedule. So those are just a few of the things that you'll want to um, take a look at. and. Once that's done, I can come to my pulse, my pulses, and you'll notice I have a lot going on here. I see it here in Student Sense of Belonging. I can clean up my view, remove drafts, and disable pulses, and now it's a lot easier to find my pulse. I see the dates, most relevant start date, and how many pulse administrations I have coming up. So that's how you would create a pulse or a survey. And keep in mind for students, we'll send that survey out um, by the Chrome extension or that pop-up. And for staff, you can send it by from the, the Chrome extension pop-up or email. And for your families, we can either send an email or an SMS text message. Let's put what you just learned into practice. Click on the Create a Pulse card from your launch pad, or you can click on the Pulses link and select student from the Create a Pulse link on the green button. Complete the three steps to create your pulse. And now would be a good time to pull out those questions that you saved from your previous knowledge check. Okay, now that we've created our pulse that will go out at the beginning of the school year in August, I wanna come back and look at what it would look like for the student before it goes out. So I'm gonna go back to my pulses list page over here, and I'm gonna just clean this up really quick to remove those drafts, okay? So I see my survey that we created. You'll notice if I click the actual title, it's going to go to a edit settings. I can get there from there, but the quicker option is to go to this dot, 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 pulse options menu on the side, and I'm going to click view participants. Now I see that the upcoming poll starts August 28th, and I can click on any student from this list. And then you'll notice I have the view timeline option and the preview link. So if I click preview, now we'll see what Eduardo would see. I can go ahead and look at each question and just go ahead and respond as though I'm Eduardo. And there we go. Now the other option that I mentioned, let me go back to our Pulse List page, is if I were to click on the edit settings, the title itself. So if I click there, you'll notice it takes me back to the configuration of the Pulse. But if I go to the very top and it says latest activity, I can then find the participation report. So you'll see it's a couple extra steps, but I can still go back and find that preview link again. And that's it. Let's pause for a knowledge check. Navigate to your pulse list to find your newly created pulse. Click on that dot 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 to view the participants list. Select any student on the list and click their preview link. So while I was in my participation um, looking at the student preview link. Let's say I'm scrolling through my list and notice I've got a student here that should not be participating because their, their parent guardian submitted an opt-out form. Um, so I'm gonna show you where you would go to opt that student out. So I'm gonna come back to my launch pad and this student card here um, is where I'm gonna find the opt-out option. Now keep in mind only system admins have the ability to opt out students. So I'm gonna search for Juliet 
to make this quicker, there she is. Rita Abernathy is the student who got an opt-out form. I'll click on her name and then you'll notice the dot, dot, dot on the top right. I'll click opt-out and there it is. Juliet will no longer receive any pulses. Now, if I come back to that student's card in this top left corner, I can see who is opted out on my list. And then that way, if I ever need to come opt them back in, I can just click on their name, click the dot, 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 and opt them back in. Let's practice opting students out of a pulse. Go to the student's card from your launch pad and select a student. Click on their name and the dot, dot, dot menu at the top right of the page to opt them out of pulses. You can click the student's card again, select opted out from the drop down list on the top left side of the page, click the student name and the dot 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 menu to opt them back in. Congratulations on completing Kelvin Learning Module 4. Today you created your first pulse, previewed a pulse, and opted out a student. If you need additional support creating your pulses, please reach out to your Kelvin CSM or you can submit a ticket to hello at kelvin.education.